All right, uh, a Donage band right there. Amazing, amazing mu music. Thank you very much for your uh, ministry this morning. Karibu sana. This is Sunday Best. You're definitely on KTN Home. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to get to share with you with beautiful music and, of course, conversations. Today we are talking about fidelity and forgiveness. And uh, our brother, Dr. Amos Kea, broke it down for us very powerfully. And our prayer is that uh, we will keep finding forgiveness. We will keep finding uh, even fidelity in places where it's happened. I'm with uh, Pastor Eston. Thank you, Sana It's good to have you. Good to have you man. You're well? Thank you. I'm Bless? You know, you know, you know, you Yes. Like, when your pastors on a kanga mic up, and as anga to kidogo, it's a strategy, <laughs> right? Because they, they are very, they have very powerful vocals. In a few minutes, you, you understand yes. why it is here. <laughs> but it's good yes, to sir. have you. Thank you. You are a minister. Yes. Share, tell us where you, you minister and where the church is located. Uh, I minister with Kingdom Covenant Church. Right. It is in Mweki, okay. Kasarani. All right. Together with my father, Reverend John Kemani. Ah. Yes. Lovely. Yes. And of course, you also do music. Yes. Yes, I'm a gospel uh, music minister. Uh -huh. Or rather, what we normally call artists. Uh, yes, artists. Yes. I'm a gospel artist. All right. And a songwriter. Lovely. And you're a vocal coach as well. Yes. I happen to be having quite a number of people who come to me. All right. For training and coaching. Right. I, I'm a vocal coach and I also train them. Yeah. Or I mentor them rather. You mentor them yes. as well. Mm. Karibu sana. Thank you. I, I, it's Thank always you a pleasure sir. seeing young pastors who are committed to this call. Yes. Kuduma ni muito. Kabisa. Kabisa. Kama si muito. Utakimbia. I tell you, you must be well prepared, right. well equipped. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you will die in the field. Wow. You must be That's well scary. equipped and prepared. Well because it is a battle. Prepared. One, it's a battlefield. Right. Two, it is a work of giving birth and raising children ah, for God. Wow. And therefore, you, if you are, uh, for for uh, the mothers can tell you better. Mm. When they go to the hospital, they scream all around, and and uh, when they go to breastfeed, the first few days. Terrible. Terrible. It's a lot of uh, pain. So and work. Sema kwamba kuzasi kazi. Kazi. Kazi ni kulea. Pastor Eston will yes. give you an opportunity to share and pray Thank with you. us. Thank Karibu you. Sana. Asante. Welcome you, my viewers, in the name of the Lord. And uh, this afternoon, I bless the Lord for keeping us alive. I would like us to share briefly, um, still on the, in the same line of forgiveness and fidelity. And I would like us to go straight to the book of Psalms. Psalms 23, verses 1, down. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my oil with, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I repeat verses 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. It is the will of the Father that the world may be at peace. It is the will of God that we all remain at peace with one another. It is in the will of the Father that no one shall hate his brother or his sister. It is the will of God that no one shall hate his neighbor. No one shall have any bitter root against the neighbor or against the brother. That is the will of God. Actually, the reason as to why God sent his only begotten son 
is that we may have peace with one another and may have peace with God. So peace amongst ourselves and peace between us and God is so critical in the heart of God. And therefore anything that comes uh, uh, anything that comes between us and each other or between me and my brother, between you and your brother, it is actually not in the will of the Father. When, 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 but then when we live together, it is almost obvious that we shall have a conflict. It is almost obvious that we shall have our differences. It is almost obvious that my brother or my neighbor will actually cause me to stumble. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 that this Woe unto the world, for there are many things that will cause us to stumble. Now, um, as long as I am alive, and as long as I have my neighbors, and as long as I'm a neighbor or a brother to someone, I will offend them, and they will offend me. It is, it is obvious. Now, this scripture in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 23, David says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of of my enemies. Now mark these words. He does not say that you prepare a table before my enemies, but he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. It is important to understand that in the old times, covenants were established. The covenants of peace were expressed when people eat together. Watu wakikula pamoja kwa sahani moja ilikuwa ina maana kwamba hao watu ni mandugu, hao watu wako na amani. Hao watu they have peace with one another and their hearts are clean towards one another. Now God prepares a table before David in the presence of the enemy. This table is not for the enemies. This table is for David. What is it for him? I mean wh why is it there? Why does God prepare a table before him? Why would God prepare a table before you in the presence of the enemy? What is your action. What are you supposed to do with that table? What are you doing with that, with that bread? The intentions of God is that you hmm, you shall break the bread of that table and give it to your enemy. God has got no space for you to be at loggerheads with your enemies. God does not have any space for you to hate on your brother. God does not have any space for you even not to forgive your brother or your enemy. Now, quite often we normally tend to think that God prepares a table before us in the presence of the enemy. Now, the whole essence of the table is for your action. That you may break that bread, seek peace with your enemy, and give the bread to the enemy. Now, that is what David says. He prepareth a table before me in the presence of, a, of my enemies. And the moment you have peace with your enemy or with your brother who has offended you or with your neighbor who has offended you, then God anoints your head with oil. He separates you and he makes you his own. The love of God. God is so moved with the people who seek peace. The Bible says that seek peace with all men. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 5, verses 21, the Bible says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, verses 23, uh, 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 verses 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave the gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gifts. Your services before the Father are not important if you have no peace with your brother. You are, you are, your service on the altar of God, your praise and worship, your preaching is not as important as your peace between you and your neighbor. 
Now, Jesus says that if you have a gift that you're bringing to the altar, if you have a gift that you're bringing to the altar, and then you remember that, you, that your brother has something against you. Now, he does not say that you have offended your brother or you have done something wrong to your brother. But he says, he says, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, whether it is true you offended him or you did not, whether you are guilty or not, even hata kama haujafanya jambo la kumkasirisha, lakini amekasirika kwa sababu yako, then leave the gift on the altar and run to him and say, forgive me. Go and seek peace with him. <laughs> Quite often we have a problem when, when, uh, when we are offended or when, when, we, when, when we offend people or rather when they are offended and we do not think that really we have done anything wrong, we, 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 we thump chests. We get too proud. Our ego is way too high that we cannot even go and say sorry. By the way, sometimes some people are, uh, it is so difficult for some people to say sorry. But God says, doesn't matter what your gift is. Doesn't matter how big your gift is. And by the way, not only the gifts, but even yourself. When you're presenting your body as a living sacrifice before the Father. And then you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave it. Go and make peace with your brother. That's a hard task, right? But it is necessary. Lest your gift is not important before the eyes of God. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew chapter 18. Verses 15. If if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them. So now, when your neighbors, when your enemy, when your neighbor becomes an enemy, and you're so wounded in your spirit, in your heart, you still don't wait for them to come so that they may say sorry to you. You run to them yourself. Wao ndio wamekukosea unakimbia kwao. Baba, jamani ulilikosea, forgive me. Mm. You offend them, you run to them. They offend you, you run to them. Because it is your responsibility to pursue peace with all men. There is no room for being offended. There is no room for offending one another. I would like to pray with you such a time. When your heart, when you feel so broken and so wounded, because someone mishandled you, it is time to let go. The more you keep it in your heart, the more you are getting sick. The more you become bitter, the more you are bitter. The more you don't forgive, the more you become sick. It is, unforgiveness is poison in your heart. Let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. I pray that God, that my brother, that my sister, my viewer, will find it in the heart to go and seek peace with their enemies. For you prepare, you have given them a table. You have prepared a table before, before them in the presence of their enemies, that they may break the bread with their enemies and that they may find peace with all men. I pray that your spirit shall guide them in boldness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord God bless you. Let him do you good. Amen and amen.
Mikono ni mwako Nionyeshe baba Wema wako Unifanye chombo chako Minaomba Naomba Baba mia naomba Siku dhani mimi Nikiteleza Na kusulubu tena Uchungu mwingi machozi ya kutoka we Nisamehe baba Unizibie ufa nisijenge ukuta mwana Umetukuka na umbo ni pera Msamaha na umbo wa sheta Popote ni Chochote nifanya cho sasa Nifunguwe macho Nipate kuona Na kuhisi Nipate upako wako Naomba baba Minaomba Mikono ni meindua Nishike baba Unifiche Nifunguwe macho, nipate kuona Na kuhisi, nipate upako wako Naomba baba, minaomba Mikono ni meinua Nishike baba, munifiche Mikono ni mwako Baba, wema wako Unifanye chombo chako Unifanye chombo chako